So today I will present our work, Tone Truck, which is a time-based lo indoor localization system. This is a joint work with uh, Catex from the Russell from NEC Labs and my supervisor, Kyle Jamison. So nowadays, indoor localization is very important. It's playing a critical role in many emerging applications, including variables, augmented reality, and indoor navigation. So a lot of research has been done and many systems have been proposed, not just in the academia. It has also attracted attention from industry. So Qualcomm now has their, their IZ indoor localization function embedded in all their Snapdragon chipsets. Apple they released their iBacon service to localize Apple devices. So it's predicted by the end of 2018, the indoor localization market will be 4.5 billion. It's a large market. So all of our smartphones nowadays are automatically connected to a cell tower with 2G, 3G, and even 4G services. And most of phones have GPS functions. In the indoor environment, most of the time, we prefer our phone to be connected to the Wi-Fi hotspot. So one obvious question you may ask is uh, why we don't use cell tower and a GPS to do localization? Why we need Wi-Fi for indoor localization? So the answer for cell tower localization is uh, you can use a cell tower to localize your mobile to, to the accuracy of around 20 meters, 30 meters, but not, not, not better. The same happens for GPS. And another big problem for GPS is in the indoor environment, the signal is very weak, and we cannot employ a GPS signal for indoor localization. There are a lot of other schemes proposed to include ultrasound infrared camera. And for all these systems, they need dedicated infrastructure, infrastructure to be installed. And also for some systems like camera, the privacy is a big issue. So we still prefer the indoor localization system to be hosted on the Wi-Fi infrastructure because Wi-Fi is everywhere. It's so popular. It's ubiquitous. ubiquitous. So the Wi-Fi-based indoor localization can be categorized into three groups. The first group is the RSSI-based localization. The pioneer work is, is radar. There are many other works follow this direction. They either try to increase the localization accuracy or reduce the offline training offset, training efforts. And another direction is the angle arrival based localization. So the requirement for angle arrival based localization to work is uh, the AP needs to have uh, multiple antennas attached to a single access point. And the last category is a time based localization. There's one, the first day, there's one work presented from NTU, a uh, splicer. Uh, the, 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 the limit for time-based localization is the resolution is limited by the bandwidth. And our tone truck is also in this category. So now I will introduce a little bit more what's the problem with time-based localization. So time-based localization, TOA, TDOA, is not very popular with Wi-Fi, mainly because we have very limited bandwidth with Wi-Fi standard. So 11AG, we have only 20 megahertz bandwidth size. And even for 11N, we have uh, 40 megahertz. It's corresponding to 7.5 meters raw accuracy. So this limited bandwidth is a main problem for time-based localization with Wi-Fi. But now we have a new opportunity. We have 11AC on the market. And 11AC is supporting up to 160 megahertz sampling, 160 hertz bandwidth, which means much higher sampling rate as the hardware. However, even with this 160 megahertz bandwidth, we can see the raw resolution still is around two meters. It's not enough for many applications which require below one meter level of accuracy. So that's why we propose our system, Tone Truck, which is able to overcome, break the bandwidth limit for time-based localization. So before I go into the detail of our Tone Truck's design, I will briefly introduce what's our super resolution scheme, super resolution music time arrival scheme. So I have one mobile and one access point. This mobile has one direct path signal and one reflection path signal reaching the access point. And we can do the signal processing, the music signal processing at the frequency domain to generate this kind of a time arrival information. And we can see there are two peaks corresponding to the two signals, one direct path signal and one reflection path signal. So what I want to emphasize here, this kind of scheme is called a super resolution scheme, but still there's a limit for this super resolution scheme. It's able to improve the raw resolution by two times, but still there's a limit. So which means if the path difference between these two signals getting too close, 
even a super resolution skin is not able to resolve these signals correctly. So I will show what does the super resolution scheme mean here in this slide. So with 20 megahertz bandwidth, the raw resolution is 15 meters. So I use a vertical dotted line to indicate the ground truth, and uh, the, blue, the blue curve is the time arrivals uh, information generated by the music algorithm. So we can see here, the first subplot, I separate the two signals by around 10.7 meters, and we generate the time arrival information. We can see the two peaks is matching the uh, ground truth. But if we decrease the path difference, path dis path difference between the two signals to eight meters, we can see the one, there's one peak, the right-hand peak, is uh, deviated from the ground truth a little bit. If we further decrease, the deviation becomes more. And finally, the two peaks, actually the two peaks merge into one peak, which means music is not even able to tell there are two signals. So what's the new opportunity here we can utilize to improve the performance? So we find 11AC nowadays actually is, uh, it will become very popular in the enterprise in the universities. And 11AC employs primary and the secondary channels. So the main purpose is to avoid the neighbor APC interference, but 11AC is, is able to switch channel quite quickly and without reassociation and authentication. So with this opportunity, we ask this question. Yes, we want higher bandwidth channel for like finer resolution, time arrival information. But sometimes, most of the time, we don't have like a large bandwidth channel. We only have like a 320 megahertz channel here. Can we combine this 320 megahertz channel into one piece, like, like 60 megahertz, one piece of channel to give us much better time of arrival information? And we find that naively combining data together is not working. And another key observation for our work is uh, I just mentioned, even the super resolution scheme, there's a limit. So when the two signals gets really close to each other, the music super resolution scheme is not able to resolve both the signals correctly. So this time arrival spectrum, time arrival information is not accurate. But if we go deeper, we find compared with the ground truth, the larger peak is much more accurate compared to the smaller peak. So we also verify this with the benchmark and we can see always the larger, the stronger peak is very accurate has a much smaller area. So with these two key observations, we propose our tone track system with three key components. The first component is a channel combination. So we combine several adjacent channels to create a larger virtual bandwidth channel, which can give us much better time of arrival information. And the second component is uh, even when the spectrum, when the time of arrival information is not accurate overall, still we can retrieve useful, relatively important, and uh, uh, accurate information from the spectrum. And finally, we want to handle the most challenging scenario in any localization system is when the, one, when the direct path is 100% blocked. There's no direct path exist. How can you do the localization? So I will, I will talk about the first component, channel combination, first. So in order to combine data received at different channels and at different times, of course they are received within channel coherence time, but still they are received at different times. So every time we do like a packet detection, we can synchronize a packet to like a one sample level, but always there's a subsample random time offset. In order to combine the data all together, the first step we want to do is that we need to remove this random time offset. But after we remove this time offset, we find still not working. So what we do for, to remove this time offset is, is, is here. So we generate the time arrival information because the two packets are received within a very short time period. They are very similar to each other. So we can simply align the two time arrival information together by aligning the largest peak and remove the time offset, but we find it's not working. So this, this problem actually, um, struck, I was struggled here like for, for several weeks, and later we zoom in to the frequency domain. So we plot the face information in the frequency domain for each subcarrier to see what's going on there. So here, the right-hand side and the left-hand side, I have two plots, the phase plot for two packets received. We can see if we rem remove the time offset difference, what we are doing is actually we make the slope of the, the phase information received, received the same. But still, we can see there's a gap there. Because we are combining adjacent channels together, so we can see from those adjacent subcarriers, they are all continuous, there's no gap, so which means 
like those hardware, like introduce some random like uh, uh, face offset in the frequency domain. So after we remove this, we make it work. And let's see what, what happens if we combine several channels together. So with just one channel, we can see we can, differen we, we can differentiate two signals when the signal is separated by, by around 9.6 meters. But when the distance between the signal getting like smaller and smaller, they just merge into one signal. But with three channels here combined together, we can see even the distance between the two signals is uh, 2.4 meters. We are able to resolve both of them very accurately. So which means the channel combination we propose is working very efficiently. The second component for tone truck is uh, we want to do spectral identification because I mentioned even when the overall spectrum is not accurate, still some useful information can be retrieved from the spectrum. So we compare the uh, distance between the two peaks I mentioned there's a limit, resolution limit. So we compare the distance of the two peaks with the resolution limit. If the distance is larger than the limit, we keep these two spectrum. We know it's always, they are always, always accurate. However, when the distance between the two peaks is smaller, is smaller than resolution limit, then we check the relative amplitude of the peak because from the benchmark, I mentioned the stronger peaks are more accurate. So we can still keep the right-hand side uh, spectrum for localization and uh, discard the first one. The last component for tone truck is uh, we want to handle the most challenging scenario in indoor localization is sometimes there's no direct pass there. We only have reflection pass. So here, the mobile direct pass to the second AP, AP2, actually is 100% blocked. We only have DR, the direct pass left. If we employ this DR for localization, we will get wrong result. So what can we do? We find we can employ the simple uh, triangle inequality property to help in this kind of scenario. So the distance between the APs is fixed as DC. And if we always have like a direct pass, we know D1 minus D2 minus D1 is always smaller than DC based on the triangle inequality. But sometimes if the direct pass is blocked, we can find DR minus D1 is larger than DC. And if this is detected, we know DI is a no line of sign, it's a reflection pass. Of course, this scheme cannot 100% detect uh, the reflection pass. So we propose another second scheme to reinforce uh, th this scheme uh, to identify which is a reflection pass. So I have five APs here. The AP5 is blocked, 100% blocked with respect to the mobile. If we choose this blocked AP for localization with other APs, I will have all the location estimate like randomly, randomly located at some place. But if I, if I choose those, if I choose those APs from AP one, two, three, four, they are all clustered and gathered at the same location. So with this scheme, we can also find out which AP is a bad AP and then remove that AP for our localization purpose. So for our implementation, uh, we use the Rice Wall platform, and uh, for evaluation today, uh, I will just talk the two most important uh, evaluations, uh, which is a uh, channel combination scheme. I want to show our channel combination scheme work very efficiently. And also the uh, performance of tone truck when there's a time synchronization error. Because for time-based localization, we need to deal with the uh, time synchronization between the access point. It's not possible to have like uh, all the APs wirelessly synchronized to like uh, one nanosecond. There's a quite large time synchronization error. So the first figure I show here is uh, raw performance with the latest super resolution scheme. So with the super resolution scheme, music, we can achieve around like a three meter median accuracy. But, but note here, the, we have a long tail, which means the worst scenario, we, uh, the error is around 10 meters. So with our tone truck, even without channel, channel combination, with our other two schemes, we are able to improve the performance to around two meters. If we combine two channels, three channels, actually we effectively reduce the uh, uh, median error to below one meter. And note here, we are using 20 megahertz channels. Of course, we can apply our scheme to 160 megahertz channel. Then the performance will be much better. We can even apply our channel combination scheme to like a 60G to UWB to even increase the performance there. The second, uh, Evaluation I want to show is a time synchronization error. So first I show the, 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 
the result without any time synchronization error. Then we introduce a time synchronization error between the eight piece, like five nanosecond synchronization error and 10 nanosecond synchronization error. We can see even with 10 nanosecond synchronization error, our performance is, st is still quite good. And we believe in the future, this time synchronization error between the eight piece will, will be further reduced. So with that, I conclude my talk today. So I introduce our tone truck system, which we increase, we increase the effective bandwidth without actually increasing the hardware sampling rate for any time-based localization. And uh, there are some future work we are, we are exploring. The first is that we want to combine uh, larger bandwidth channels, like 160 uh, in the 11AC standard to achieve accuracy level close to UWB and 60 GHz. And also, uh, for our current implementation, we are not able to combine like no adjacent channels. We are only able to combine adjacent channels like channel one, channel five, channel nine. So if, we, if in the future we are able to combine no adjacent channels, it will be a very cool piece of work. We can combine like a one channel from 2.4G, one channel from wide space, another, another channel from 60G, another channel from, uh, from 5G. So that's our future work. So thank you very much. I'm ready to take any question. Thank you, Jeff, for the talk.